Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring, and this is my weekend update podcast. How is it going? Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good week in the markets or at least lost the least amount, or maybe you made money. I, I, I hope you did. It was a tumultuous week. Um, I hope you stayed safe out there, keeping the faith. And uh, today, actually, uh, we had a nice little bounce here. Nice to have on Friday, gave the bulls maybe a little hope of maybe a short-term bottom, but who knows what we, sh we shall see what's going on. But um, all right, so the format for today, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the US legal disclaimer. Secondly, we're gonna come back. We're gonna take a look at my current positions that I made uh, last week, uh, when I entered them, why I entered them, how I am going to manage them going forward. Um, had a couple new trades today and uh, I'll share those with you as well. After that, uh, we're going to do a little, we're going to talk a little bit about trader psychology, how important it is. I mentioned this last week, but when you have a market like this, that's so volatile and so crazy and people are losing a lot of money, emotions get elevated, they get revved up and people break from their plans. They, they stop following their plan. And the most important thing that you can do, regardless of the volatility, is follow your plan. Position size, know where your end of day stops are, know your uh, um, emergency stops are, profit targets, all that kind of stuff. It's very, very important. But the key thing, I don't care how you trade, just as long as you're position sizing correctly, you give yourself a good risk to reward ratio based upon um, <clears throat> combination confluences of supports um, whatever you do to the upside I don't care uh, there's all sorts of way to skin a cat and uh, do whatever you want but what I would really recommend regardless of what you do to the upside although there hasn't been any upside lately but in normal times regardless of what you do to the upside you have to cut those losses quickly that's the name of the game um, you know, there's a certain formula in trading to be profitable. You can have large wins, you can have small wins, you can have break even trades, you can even have small losses. All that works. You can still be a long term profitable trader with that. But if you let your losses get out of hand, that's where uh, that's what wrecks most trading accounts. So if I can offer you my very, very best advice uh, after tr trading more than 25 years now, cut those losses small. Uh, when you're wrong and do whatever you want to the upside. Of course, I have a methodology that I use to the upside. I think it's good, works well for me, um, doesn't have to work well for everyone, but I would, I would say that most professional traders, I mean, almost all professional traders would tell you, do whatever you want to the upside. It's up to you, it's up to your personality, but do not let losses get out of hand. All right, so, uh, where I was going with that was trader psychology. So uh, I will talk a little bit about trader psychology today. Hopefully that will be helpful. Then I'm gonna share a poem, a trading poem from my good friend, friend Frank. I like to do that each week. He always has such great poems that are pertinent to what's going on in the current environment. After that, I have gone down through my watch list. I have identified 12 potentials for next week. Uh, that would be of interest to me to take a new trade. Usually the price either has to go higher or it has to go lower from where it is. Um, and so I, I have eight, uh, 12, excuse me, that we're gonna go through and um, I'll explain what I'm looking for for next week. All right, so that is what we're gonna do today. Um, I have to run the US legal disclaimer. I will be back in about 40 seconds. So please, t uh, please hang tight, thank you. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right, here we go. Let's start off with Apple. Boy, I was really thinking that I had a good trade here on Apple. Did not work. I bought this back on 510 
on May 10th, 2022, with the close under, close back over the 250-day moving average. 250-day moving average historically has proven to be a good support level for Apple uh, with the quality of company that Apple is. And you can see back here on the 2nd of May, we bounced right off there and went right on up. We did come back down, but I like this trade. It gave me a very good risk to reward ratio with the close under the 250, close over the 250. Any uh, close below the 250 would be my emergency stop. But then the next day was that big, huge, brutal down day and I had to get out. You can see down here, this pink line, this is my emergency stop. When I get into the new trades that I took today, I'll go through the, the process of position sizing uh, uh, correctly for what the market's current volatility is. But there's a certain point with your emergency stop that you say, hey, if it gets to this point, I'm done. Because if, do if it did get to that point, I know exactly how much I'm willing to lose. And so I position size and I calculate where my emergency stop is. So if it does get there, I get out and I know exactly how much I've lost. Um, so you can see got in here at 154.80. Next day had the big crush down, got out at 147.50. You can see it did not hit my emergency stop. I exited this at the end of the day or right before the end of the day. Uh, but had this gone down to the emergency stop, even if it was five minutes after the market open or at noon or in the mid morning, I would have to get out because normally I, I get rid of all of my trades, my entries and my exits at the end of the day. I'm an end of day trader. And I, I, I believe that the smart money comes in at the end of the day, the large fi financial institutions are dealing with the most money, best information, best technology. And I like to follow what they're doing, but my emergency stop is not at end of day. If it ever gets there, I would get out. So you can see uh, it did not get there, but had it got there, this is a good example of if it did get there, I would have gotten out in the middle of the day and I would have not waited until the end. So uh, this was a bummer. This this was a big hit percentage wise, 4.71%. And I just want to clarify because I've had a couple people uh, uh, write to me and ask me and say, oh, you lost 4.7% of your uh, account value on this trade. No, that is not true at all. Because the way that I position size, I risk a maximum of a half a percent of my capital. A half a percent of my capital is the maximum that I would lose. And so it didn't get down to my emergency stop. Had it got down there, I would have lost a half a percent of my capital, right? Yes, here it shows 4.71% and that's on the amount that I purchased. Yes, but it would have had, if even if it would have got to my emergency stop here and gotten down, it would have had to go down 7.57%. And would I lose 7.57% of my capital? No, I would only lose a half a percent. So just wanna clarify that because I have had quite a few uh, questions about this. So got in 154.80. Uh, obviously this closed below the 250, it even closed below the 300. So had a loss of 4.71%. Um, up nice today though, uh, right back to about where I sold it though. Tesla, Whew, another <laughs> beauty. Um, I'll tell you what, it's interesting. This, this year has been really tough for most swing traders, obviously, and for me as well. Uh, but you know, I trade monthly bars, I trade weekly bars, I trade daily bars, and I intraday trade as well. And the reason that I do that, I like to spread out my positions and my entries over different time frames because usually one time frame will work, maybe the others don't. Sometimes most of them will work and one doesn't work, but thank goodness for day trading this year. I mean, because this has been, actually this last week, uh, my trading partner, Ava, at Presence Trades on Twitter, if you follow this channel, please, please follow her. She's my trading partner. She's one of the most amazing people and one of the most amazing traders I've, I've ever met. I mean, she takes it so seriously, I love it. But the good news, day trading wise, she and I had a record, we've had a record month, we had a record week last week, and I'm not saying that to brag, I'm just telling you this 
to illustrate the point that that is why I like to trade different time frames. Yeah, monthlies, weeklies, dailies have not worked. I mean, literally have not worked because the market has been in such a strong down move. But the volatility that we've been having intraday has made up a huge amount of the losses. And so it's just a good example of why I trade different time frames because one can help mitigate the other. And you know, with all this volatility up and down, uh, day trading has been wonderful. And so uh, congratulations, uh, Ava. Uh, you've been a big part of our record setting uh, month and week. So appreciate you, Ava, really, really do. Um, so Tesla, all right, here we go. I bought Tesla back on uh, May 6th with an intraday rejection of the 250. You can see the last time back here on the 28th of April, we rejected the 250 and closed above. Back here on the second, we bounced right at it. Uh, here on the fifth, we got right close to it. So when it rejected the 250, I was like, this is a good trade. This really is a good trade. This 250 day moving average is holding. Well, the next day we had the big, huge down move. You can see here's my emergency stop. Um, so I entered at 869.01 and got out at 787.61 for a 10.44% loss. Horrible loss. Was it 10.44% on my account? Of course not. If it, if even if it had gone down all the way to my emergency stop, how much would I have lost? A half a percent of my account. So the percentage of the loss, although it may seem impressive, I, I mean, sorry, the, the percentage of the gain might seem impressive or the percentage of the loss might seem horrible. It, it's not like that because of the way that I position size. And when we get to the new positions, I'll show you, I'll show you exactly uh, what the, um, procedure is uh, that I use to figure all that out. So anyway, unfortunate loss, 10.44%. Uh, uh, the next day went up a little bit, then came down, then came down. It's interesting how when even if you take a bad loss and then it keeps going down, you're like, oh man, sweet. It makes you feel better, right? It did rally up today, uh, but still actually below uh, where I sold it uh, in the first place. All right, Netflix. So those that's Apple with a loss of 4.71%. That's Tesla with a loss of 10.44%. Uh, did take a new day, uh, trade today on Netflix. Bought here at 186.71, it's 187.66. It's up 0.52%. Why did I enter this? Well, I entered this with the close under the 30 RSI and then close over the 30 RSI. I also like that it's above the negative third Keltner channel. About 92% of prices hold or stop, hold or go up when we get to the negative third ATR channel. You can say Netflix after earnings gapped right down below it. So we've been under this negative third ATR channel for a while, but the, the fact that yesterday we got back above it is a good sign because now we're back in the channel. Um, but the, really not an entry signal because it was still under 30 RSI. Today, it went to 32.89. It MACD also crossed over. That puts the odds in our favor as well uh, with some positive momentum. And we finally closed back above the 5 EMA. We have been under the 5 EMA ever since earnings. We did pop our head over it the day of the Fed announcement. And then you know what happened after that. Boom. We've been down, 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 down. We find we had a nice, strong close above the 200, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the five EMA. That's a good sign. It's a good sign. Confluences and combination of the indicators lining up, lining up really will put the odds in your favor. And so that is why I bought Netflix today, a close under 30, close back over, uh, close under the five EMA, close back over the five EMA, MACD was positive. And uh, so, uh, my, uh, my end of day, my emergency stop here, 147.42. And my end of day stop is going to be a close back below the 30 hour size. So I was telling you about how to position size. So let's just take a hypothetical hundred thousand dollar account. Okay. Uh, earlier, I just told you that I risk a half a percent most people, because I'm conservative and, and I trade pretty large accounts. And so 
uh, let's just go with a 1% for this example. So let's just say you have a hypothetical $100,000 trading account. 1% of that is what? $8,000, right? So start off with that. Now listen, if you have a $50,000 account, your maximum account, your maximum loss 1% is uh, 500. If you have a $25,000 account, 1% of that's 250, right? So I'm just going off a hypothetical $100,000 account, 1%, all right? So but 1% of 100,000 is $1,000. I take the $1,000 in this case, I divide it by the value of the two ATR, that's two standard deviations below where I bought the, uh, uh, where I bought the stock, where I have the new entry. So I take $1,000 divided by 39, oops, 39.29, nine, that would tell me to buy 25 shares right? So it's adjusting for the current market volatility using this two ATR. So I'd buy 25 shares. So if 25, we'll just round it here, 25 shares moves 39.29 points. How much is that? Well, it's roughly a thousand dollars. And that's, so this is my emergency stop down here, 147. So if that's the case, kind of going back to the percentage loss, this, even if this went down, this would have to go down 25.61%. And if it did, how much would you lose? You'd just lose your thousand dollars. It sounds like you lost, you know, a quarter of your money, but it's not true. And then that's, that's the reason why I use uh, the two ATR, two position size. So I figured out how many shares to buy by taking that 1000 hypothetical $1,000 maximum loss, dividing by the value of the two ATR. I then place my emergency stop, the value of the two ATR 39.29 below. Now that's my emergency stop. Where's my end of day stop? My end of day stop is the opposite of why I got in the trade at this point. Why did I get in the trade? Under 30, over 30, under the five EMA, over the five EMA, MACD was positive. So right now the, e, the RSI is 32.89. So Monday, if it closes at 30, do I get out? No, because it's not under 30. What about if it closes at 29.99? Yes. I would get out. So about 5% of the time you are going to hit these emergency stops. I mean, even with last week as tumultuous as last week was, I didn't even hit any emergency stops. So that goes to show you why I put these so far away and how I position size. Had a lot of losses, but never hit any emergency stops. It only happens about 5% of the time. The rest of the time, your losses are going to be just an untrigger of why you got into the trade. I got into the trade with the under 30 over 30. Um, so 32.89, if it closes below 30, that's where I'm going to get out. So very important to understand. I use an emergency stop and an end of day stop. We have an orange line up here. What's this? This is the value of 1.5 ATRs above my entry. The emergency stops was two ATRs below, but as soon as it gets to 1.5 ATRs above, then I go into trailing stop mode. And when I get there, if I get a close below the previous day's low, I'm going to get out of half and so forth and so on. Um, you know, in this podcast, I, I really can't go into all the details, the teaching details of what I do. And I'm just trying to kind of get a brief overview. Um, you know, if you'd like to learn more on my YouTube channel, I have a playlist called lessons playlist. I have some lessons in there, V1s, V2s, different types of trade that I use, kind of a high overview. Those are totally free. Uh, so do yourself a favor or if, you know, if you'd like to know more about how I trade and some of the things that I'm talking about here, but a little bit more in detail, just do yourself a favor, go over, check it out. It's free uh, on YouTube, just in the lessons playlist. Uh, another option, another couple options. Uh, I also teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. I have a 15 hour course. I've worked with people from all over the world. Um, I've got great reviews. I've had so many great students and uh, it's a great course and I teach you step-by-step -step everything that I do. So that's a, an option. And then another option, I have an online video um, course available at udemy.com and the links in the description. So anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about that after, after uh, we get done with the show. All right. So that is Netflix. That is Netflix. We'll see what happens, but most important position size, know where my emergency stop is, know where my end of day stop is, which is going to be a close below the 30 hour side. All right. Now notice on Netflix, this, this was on the daily bars, right? On the dailies. So I use the value of the two, the two ATR on the daily. I have a new trade here that I took today 
on Friday uh, on the weekly bars and uh, weekly bars close on Friday so this is why I took it again gets back to me trading the multiple time frames so here's Russell 2000 why did I buy it well I had a nice rejection of the negative third ATR channel I had a nice rejection of the 250 I had a nice rejection of the 200 so um, and a double bottom with a bullish divergence meaning here we have a low with deep red MACD bars we have a rally into green we pull back we're lower than this previous low but you see how the depths of the uh, MACD bars the momentum indicator are not as deep so that's good that's what I learned from studying one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Alexander Elder we have a double bottom Bottom bullish divergence place but I need a trigger what's my trigger my trigger was the intraday rejection of the 200 so let's get back to position sizing so I showed you how to position size on Netflix let me show you how to position size on IWM let's just take that 1% of total capital $100,000 1% $1,000 $1, and I'm going to divide it by the value of the 2 ATR which is 2183 but I'm trading off of these this is a weekly bar so I have to look at the weekly reading of the 2 ATR it's 2183 so $1,000 divided by 2183 tells me to buy 45.8 so 46 shares so if 46 shares move 21.83 down to here to my emergency stop how much do I lose I just lose the thousand dollars right I lose the the one percent even though the one percent loss in the stock move is equivalent to 13.68 so I position size correctly using the volatility so even if this moves 13.68 I only lose 1%. Make sure, does that make sense? I hope, I hope it makes sense. So uh, we position sized, uh, we found our entry, we position sized, we place our emergency stop, have my um, trailing stop level up there. So we'll see what happens. This is up 0.15% right now. Okay, and then Nike, I did buy Nike last week. Again, week, uh, a weekly trade the signals were a bounce at the 200 day moving average it's also a bounce at the negative third atr channel and also an under 30 over 30 nice confluence of signals this week at one point we were way down what's my emergency stop well uh, my emergency stops two atrs for my entry but excuse me what is my end of day stop well my end of day stop is simply a close below the two uh, uh, a weekly close below the 200 right well during the week we were well below the 200 and it had had it closed below the 200 I would have just gotten out of the trade but look it went down tested it came back up and held that level so I still have the trade I am down 1.65 percent on the trade but nice recovery all right so that is that is it just one quick one run through out of Apple 4.71 percent loss out of on the daily Tesla out for 10.44 percent loss on the daily new daily trade today Netflix um, uh, this is up 0.52 percent uh, already uh, that's also on the daily on the weekly um, up 0.15 percent on the new trade on IWM and then again on the weekly 1.65 so anyway hope that helps there uh, let's take a look now and we'll go over and let's talk a little bit about trader psychology or some good trading words of wisdom uh, this is from the divergent trader at the uh, trader divergent over on Twitter really like this channel he always has good posts helpful things about trader psychology or just good um, basically trading words of wisdom and uh, this one doesn't talk so much about psychology but it's part of it 12 ways to invest in yourself and you know let, let me share this with you um trading is not just about pushing buttons and charts in my opinion it's about your entire life trading is something that encompasses my entire life everything that I do basically revolves around trading and yeah I study charts I do my homework I analyze but it's so much larger than that it's getting good night's sleep it's exercising it's visualizing positive outcomes it's meditating it's so many things in order to be in your best 
mental state in order to trade or you have to do all these things right and i'll go down through these but yeah eat right exercise sleep do presence work meditate visualize sounds like a lot of work right well don't you think professional athletes do this don't you think tiger woods or you know any other famous uh uh athlete tom brady i guarantee you eating well sleeping well visualization exercise having peace in your life all of these things factor in so much to what your emotional state is and your emotional state usually dictates how you trade so this is why i'm reading this here today uh 12 ways to invest in yourself plan of course you need a plan right i'm gonna relate this to trading okay but this this can encompass all areas of your life but i'm going to relate this to trading plan you need a plan you know you need to know how to set up a trade emergency stops end of day stops position sizing profit targets overhead resistance level significant overhead resistance level trading trailing stops you need a plan in trading you need a plan and more importantly you need to stick to it exercise Exercise is hugely important for everything. But again, back to trading. Um, you know, when I get done trading, I, I always go out into the mountains and walk. I have to get the stress out and the adrenaline. You know, sometimes I place up to five, 600 trades a day because I trade multiple accounts and they're high speed trades, if you can believe it, but it's true. Um, and it, it take, it's a lot of stress and there's a lot of adrenaline and angst. And with whatever type of trading you're doing, especially with a week like last week, it's really important that you exercise, get some of that adrenaline out, right? So exercise, set goals. Yeah, of course, you know, how are you going to get, how are you going to get to where you want to go if you don't know where you're going to go? You have to have a goal, set some, you know, weekly goals, monthly goals. I don't set dollar amounts. My goals are to follow my plan, not to have FOMO, not to break my rules, right? Those are my goals. Sleep well, of course. I try to sleep every night, good seven, eight hours. Very important, everyone. Read books. Again, back to trading. There's so many great trading books out there. I would highly re recommend uh, Moving Averages 101 by Steve Burns, uh, one of my teachers and mentors over the years. It's a great book. Moving Averages 101. I actually wrote the foreword in that book. If you'd like to check that out, it's over on Amazon. Uh, the New Trading for a Living by Dr. Alexander Elder is a great book. Uh, trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, fantastic book. There's so many great trading books out there. Uh, eat healthier. You know, I've been through a little bit of a health scare uh, this month. Haven't really mentioned it. Uh, things are fine, but uh, pretty scary. Boy, I'll tell you what. You get some news like that, it really changes your perception of life. At least it did for me. Uh, had some dark nights of the soul there, but you know, luckily, thankfully, things worked out. Uh, but I did have to change my diet quite a bit from what I was doing before. Um, but just in general, eat healthier, less sugars, less carbs, right? It will make you feel better. It will help your emotional state. That will help your trading. Find a mentor. Very important, everyone. Very, very important. And whether you're in sports or in music, trading, whatever you're doing, finding a mentor is important. I wish I would have found a mentor when I was young, uh, when I first started trading over 25 years ago. It, it's it's important to find a good teacher, find a good mentor. Of course, I. I teach classes, you know, I mentor my students after we're done with the classes and try to help them out uh, however I can. But, you know, whether it's me or someone else, find a mentor. And I might add here, find someone that you can share your trading results with, that you trust, feel comfortable with. It will make you a better trader if you can share your results because then it's not hidden and no one's going to see. If you have to show someone, it's going to make you trade better. All right. But yeah, find a mentor, find a teacher, stick to a routine. I think it's very important. Professional athletes, professional traders, they have a routine that's important to them. They follow it. Uh, I do uh, like clockwork, like Groundhog Day, invest your money. Okay. Well, yes, of course, do something with your money, whether you're long-term investing or dollar term averaging or trading like me, invest your money. 
practice meditation. This is something that I have started doing a couple months ago. Um, I try to do it about an hour every night before I go to bed. I start off with the Wim Hof breathing for about 15 minutes. That gets me in a good mental space. And then I meditate. I meditate. I visualize. I visualize myself trading, trading correctly, following my rules, having good results, being positive. Um, I highly recommend it, everyone. It really has changed me. You hear about meditations. Good. Yeah. Is it? It is. It is. Meditation, visualizations, intentions. I know I sound a little woo-woo now, but listen, I know lots of traders that do it. I know lots of athletes that do it, right? Every athlete's going to visualize themselves doing something, visualize something positive. You're a trader. Do it. There are plenty of uh, places on YouTube um, for meditation. Uh, I like Dr. Joe Dispenza. If anyone's uh, heard of him, he's on YouTube. Uh, but whatever you do, get some time where you can quiet your mind, visualize some positive things, get in touch with what's going on right now in the present moment. Um, get rid of toxic people. <laughs> okay. Well, this one touches home a, lo a little close to home for me. Um, but listen, it's important. Toxic people in your life really cause a strain on you. S uh, even if it's not conscious, subconscious, um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, I always feel better, um, when I'm away from toxic people and I would really recommend, uh, for you to do the same. You know, if it's not positive, it's not working out in your life. It's not a positive influence, you know, get rid of it. Life's too short folks. And, you know, after, uh, recent events, uh, with my health, um, you know, I, I was pretty close to my mortality. And, uh, yeah, thank God, you know, but, uh, um, just try to be positive, try to have a happy life. You know, we're here to talk about trading, but I just want you to have a happy life. So, you know, get, get rid of toxic, get rid of toxic people. I just want everybody to be happy and then challenge yourself daily. Um, yes, very, very important. And if you're a trader, uh, it's challenging, but yes, challenge yourself and grow. So re real quick recap, plan, exercise, Set goals, sleep well, read books, eat healthier, find a mentor, stick to a routine, invest your money, practice meditation, get rid of toxic people, challenge yourself daily. You know, these are 12 recommendations here for anything in life, but isn't it interesting how every single one of these 12 is relatable to trading? Trading is an all encompassing thing, everyone. You want to be in the best physical, mental shape you can be, and it will make you the best trader. So thank you, the Divergent Trader really appreciate that. Um, please follow uh, him at Trader Divergent over on Twitter. Um, okay, so listen, before we start uh, going to the charts and taking a look at the, the uh, potential setups that I'm looking at next week, uh, my Frank, my, my buddy Frank at Franco D over on Twitter. Um, he's a, a great trader. When I used to have the live podcast every day, he would come there, write a poem, based upon what was going on with that day. I mean, what a gift, right? Uh, but let's, let's read his poem today. Finally, a breath to clear our heads. This is today's poem, so, right, it's pertinent to the rally. Finally, a breath to clear our heads. Fighting the tape makes a trader see nothing but red. Money wants to grow and spread, and with inflation, there's no point keeping it under the bed. Who wants a setup that hangs by a thread? Isn't that nice? Finally, a breath of, uh, finally, a breath to clear our heads, right? Talking about the rally, fighting the tape makes a trader see nothing but red. That's true. Fighting, uh, you know, I had a week last week, uh, where I did fight a little bit. Yeah. Wasn't, was not good. And it was nothing but red money wants to grow and spread. Yes. And with inflation, there's no point keeping it under the bed. That's true. Who wants a setup that hangs by a thread? So just be patient, wait for a good trade, wait for the trade to come to you. And please follow Frank at Frank OD over on Twitter. Thanks, Frank. Really, really appreciate that. All right, here we go. So I don't have a ton of these for this week, but I have some. You know, after this big rally we've had today, um, it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not this continues or if we come right back down. 
some of the the potential trade show uh, setups that I'm going to show you here tonight are based upon the market possibly coming back down so we'll see here is Amazon well this is exactly one of them so look we went under 30 over 30 today and you might ask why didn't you take that trade well I took Netflix instead and I like to take only one trade per day even if I have five great setups I'm not gonna take them all I'm just gonna take the best one and I did like uh, Netflix better than Amazon but Amazon kind of the same thing under 30 over 30 under the five over the five did you notice that Netflix had positive MACD and Amazon does not so and we also went back over the negative 30 TR channel so next week I would like to get back into Amazon uh, I didn't get the trade today but next week Lord what is happening but next week if we go back under the 30 RSI either close under close back over or an intraday rejection of the 30 RSI that's where I'll buy it um, it will most likely be a higher low uh, uh, intraday rejection of the 30 RSI which I like best so nothing right now on Amazon whatsoever but next week if we can do another intraday test or a close under 30 over 30 that's what I'd be interested on Amazon Berkshire Hathaway well you know I missed this trade yesterday I, I just didn't see it but I would have bought this I really would have look at this beautiful intraday rejection of the 200 day moving average and an under 30 over 30 it was up today 0.76 percent not a ton but next week if we come back retest that 200 day moving average or the 250 or the 300 that's where I would look to get in you know it might just continue up from here and go and like dang I should have got it but you know you don't get them all but for BRKB or uh, Berkshire Hathaway it's BRK underscore B uh, if we have another retest of the 200 that's what I'll be interested in Caterpillar has been really strong I mean compared to the rest of the market I mean this looks kind of down but doesn't look like you know Apple or anything like that um, I would be looking to buy Apple next week if we have a nice uh, gentle close above the 200 day moving average if it closes too high then it the risk to rewards not that great anymore but if it can just close above uh, barely above or a little bit above um, I would use the 200 SMA as my end uh, my end of day stop and uh, so that's what I'm looking for next week on Caterpillar is it close back over the 200 day moving average Carnival kind of similar to Amazon but again we went under 30 over 30 today I wouldn't mind getting some Carnival but next week it would again either have to pull back intraday under 30 over 30 RSI or a close uh, back close back under and close back over but if it does if that does happen it's going to happen at a, uh, with a higher low see this low here is lower than this low we went under 30 over 30 okay fine legitimate signal but what I like is when something goes under 30 over 30 and then pulls back and tests that 30 again but the test came from a higher low you know say it was here this would be higher than this low here Walt Disney same nice you know could have bought this today uh, definitely under 30 over 30 under the negative third over the negative third and the 5 EMA but again um, I'm not gonna chase it here I already took Netflix but if I have another retest that's a higher low retest of the 30 RSI then I'd be interested in, in Walt Disney gold well uh, boy gold has, the metals have just been moved really down hard look at the RSI everyone 30 RSI people say 30 RSI doesn't really hold any weight really yes it does it really does I see it all the time and look it held exactly the 30 so where would I be interested in gold if we have another under 30 over 30 that could be of interest or if we close above the 300 or the 200 probably the 200 uh, would would make me feel a little bit better because it would also be above the negative third ATR channel so on gold if I get another under 30 over 30 intraday or close under close back over that's one potential the other potential is close over the 200 day moving average in the negative third ATR channel McDonald's holding up very very strong the relative strength on McDonald's is very strong you can see we're just kind of holding this range here um, I would have potential interest in, in uh, McDonald's if we could close above the 200 day Pfizer 
Well, I battled with Pfizer a little bit, la two trades last week. I got in, had to get out, got in, had to get out. Now we've moved a little bit nicer off of the 200 and pulling away a little bit. Actually, we might even have a 520 crossover. Wow, I haven't seen a crossover for a long time. But next week, I would be interested in Pfizer if and only if we came back, retested that 200-day moving average. If it went all the way down to the 250, yeah, I'd try it there. If the 300, yes, I'd try it there. But first thing that I'm looking for is an intraday rejection of the 200 or a close under, close back over. And the more important thing here, it would, it would be higher low, close back above the 200. Cues, you know, um, I put this on here, not really to sh show you. I mean, yes, it's 39.63. If we came back, retested the 30 RSI, I would definitely take another shot at it. But what I wanted to show you was on Thursday, it did reject the 30 RSI and it did reject the negative third ATR channel on the same day. And 30 RSIs really, in my opinion, are very valuable with indexes. With stocks, stocks can move lower and so can indexes. But look at this, it nailed it. Intraday, under 30, over 30, and it closed back over and that nailed. And maybe that's the bottom. We'll see. Very often the 30 RSI is a bottom in an index. Same thing with uh, SPY. Yesterday, Thursday, under 30, over 30, un intraday, under the negative third, over the negative third, and that marked the bottom as well. Uh, Twitter, well, Twitter down big after the news of Elon Musk and some issues with the potential purchase. Um, you know, my trading partner, Ava, pretty interesting. I, I think they had a deal that was like $55 a share. Well, we're at 40.70. Why is it under 54 if that's what it's going to be bought? Well, there may be some issues, but the nice, what I really liked about what Ava pointed out to me today was she said, look, the price is back to the same prices before the news of Elon Musk buying Twitter, right? Now, if the deal goes through, it's gonna be at $54, right? Or whatever it is up here. If it doesn't go through, well, you're still back at regular price. So I really like it. So I, but I need a, I need a uh, trigger to get me into this trade. So that's kind of the big picture, but what, what would be the trigger? Next week, it's 34.42. If it goes under 30, over 30, that would be my signal. Under 30, over 30 next week. And then Walmart. Well, we have earnings coming up. You know, I don't hold through earnings. Uh, but if we, if we were to come back either prior to earnings, retest that 200, I would be interested in buying that. Lots of confluence of signals right here about 143. You have the negative third ATR channel. You have the 100 uh, SMA. You have the 200 SMA. Uh, you have a lot of confluence right here about 143. So if it were to reject that, I may be interested in buying that. Although if it comes before earnings, I'd have to get out. Be at, right, if, it, if it comes before earnings, I'd have to get in and out before earnings. Ideally, what I like to see is earnings come out, get those out of the way and have the stock reject the 200 day moving average. I would buy it there. So, you know, like I said, I, the purpose of this podcast, just to kind of give you an idea, just so you can follow my trades, look, uh, you know, see what I'm interested in for next week and kind of how I position size and what I do. But, you know, if you would like to, if you would like to learn these things in detail, my best suggestion would be do the one-on-one -on -one course with me. I do it in the evening time via Skype. The course is 15 hours. There's five sessions. Each session is three hours. I teach you all five of the different trading approaches that I use, teach you step by step. It's very important to me that my students succeed. It's important to me because I want people to succeed. It's important to my brand and my teaching. So if you're interested, there's an email in the link of this YouTube video. Just email me and say, hey, Greg, potentially interested in taking your course. I'll email you back and say, hey, wonderful. Let's set up a Skype call. The Skype call is free. It's not a sales call. I promise you. Um, all I want to do is learn more about you, your trading, your trading goals, your trading challenges. And then it's a great time for on the Skype call for you to ask me any specific questions about the course. Works out well that way. And then when we're done with the call, 
you can think about it as long as you want. One day if you wake up and you say, hey, today's the day I really want to learn this. And you're going to learn a skill, everyone. It's a skill. It's something that you can use for the rest of your life. And I've taught people from all over the world. I've had so many, such good feedback from my students, uh, stayed friends uh, with a majority of them. I mean, we still stay in touch. You know, um, I know you're going to like it. The course costs 1750 bucks, but it's well worth it. I think the best way to learn anything is to have a mentor or a coach and specifically someone that's going to teach you for 15 hours, answer your questions. I'm super patient. Don't worry about that, but you're going to be a better trader. And yeah, it's 1750, but it's worth every penny. I promise you. And then secondly, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a online course on udemy.com. It's called the deep dip by stock trading strategy. We are right in the middle in the current market condition of deep dip by heaven, right? So it's a great course. It's nine and a half hours of video, 26 videos total, 15 study guides. And the best thing, it only costs like 12 or $15 depending on the day on Udemy. So it's, I've had so many good reviews. I've sold so many of these courses around the world and such good reviews and feedback. I would re highly recommend that you spend the 12 or 15 bucks and uh, take the course. You, 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 you're going to like it and you won't, you, you will be happy that you took the course. I promise you from my heart. I promise you. And then lastly, if you like tonight's podcast, um, I would appreciate it. I'll, all I ask is that you hit the thumbs up button. It helps the channel out. It lets YouTube know that there's some valuable content here. So they push the, they push the podcast out. And uh, so, yeah, if it was helpful at all, if you could please take uh, you know, a couple seconds, hit the, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And, you know, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed as, as well. All right. And uh, I think that's it. So yeah, uh, big day today. Uh, grateful for that. Really grateful that we had a, have had a record uh, uh, month, or, or a record month in day trading, record week in day trading this week. Had a record day a few days ago as well. So again, want to thank my uh, trading partner Ava. She's a big part uh, uh, that contributes to the success of our uh, trading team. All right. So I hope you have a good weekend. Hope you're safe. Please go out, do a little exercise, do a little meditation. Uh, eat healthy, get a good night's sleep, stud, study your chart to sound like your mom, right? Well, that's fine. Moms are good, right? That's what, that's what they do. And, uh, my mom was the same way and I appreciate it. So, um, yeah, please have a good week. Be safe. If you can, I always ask this at the end, please try to go out and do one nice thing for another human being today. Please try to go out and do one nice thing for an animal today. It really would make the world a better place if we could all do that. And one day when you need it, I, hopefully someone will be there for you and do a nice kindness for you as well. All right. So I appreciate your time. I uh, hope we all have a good trading week next week. Please be careful. Markets are volatile. Uh, if you have any comments uh, or uh, questions or, or comments, just put them in the comments below of, uh, of this YouTube video. And uh, I think that's it. So on the way out here, I have to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Um, so we will see you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. U.S. Government Required Disclaimer Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossip Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. 
Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.